It towers above sacred lands. Don't go above the tree line, whatever you do. It'll take your life. A mountain cursed with a sinister presence. People come from all over the world to come to Mount Shasta for spiritual reasons. Strange things happen about Mount Shasta. A place riddled with bizarre disappearances. I want to go back there. You yeah. can pay me to go back there. If they see you looking at them, they will come after you. Something's watching us. I'm Cliff Simon. I had my first paranormal encounter when I was young, and I've been fascinated with otherworldly beings ever since. As a military man, adventurer, and survivalist, I've explored the far reaches of the physical world. Now, I'm using those skills to investigate the unknown in places so remote, few have dared to venture. In Northern California, 60 miles shy of the Oregon border, stands a 14,000-foot volcano with a violent past. Part of the Cascade mountain range, which includes Mount St. Helens, Mount Shasta formed out of a massive eruption half a million years ago that triggered the largest landslide on Earth, covering more than 170 square miles. It's a sacred place to the Native American Karuk people and New Age spiritualists alike. Every year, thousands of visitors flock here in search of enlightenment. Wow, there it is, Mount Shasta. So this mountain is, is a dormant volcano, but Mount Shasta is a sleeping giant. The United States Geological Survey has raised the threat level to very high. The volcano has erupted 12 times over the last 10,000 years. The last time was 600 years ago, so it's overdue. You know, Shasta may soon erupt right from that crater, which means that there is a lot going on beneath our feet. There's vast lakes of magma that are pulsing, tectonic plates that are shifting. Scientists think there's a good chance Shasta could erupt, just like Mount St. Helens did in the next 30 years, threatening 100,000 residents with ash, mudslides, and rock flows. But not all the dangers up here can be explained. Back in 1999, mountain climber Carl Landers vanished into thin air while attempting to summit the peak. Search parties never found a footprint, a body, a thread of clothing, not even bones. Landers isn't the only person who went up the mountain and never came back. In 2018 alone, 12 people went missing in Shasta County under unknown circumstances. I'm here to investigate what's behind these strange disappearances. I need to get a better picture of this place. And there's no better way to do that than from the sky. I'm on my way to meet a man by the name of Grizz Adams. He has spent his lifetime searching Mount Shasta for missing and injured people. This is a true mountain man. Chris Adams, search and rescue specialist. So I spent 20 years on that mountain, on Mount Shasta, doing search and rescue. We've definitely had some uh, mysterious disappearances on Mount Shasta. Um, as you can see, it's a fairly open um, area. There's not much in the way of timber or, or anything. And to have somebody just completely disappear on you um, is sometimes just mind-boggling. That, that why can't I see somebody out here on this hillside? And if they were there, I probably would. Grizz was the lead investigator when Carl Landers disappeared 20 years ago. Carl left from Camp 5050, which is that little flat area below Lake Helen, and he was headed up to Lake Helen when he disappeared. Carl was an experienced climber, a, mount, a mountaineer. He and his group, they climbed all these high peaks in each of the county, so he was in good shape. The problem was, was he being sick, and yeah, with altitude sickness. 
At over 8,200 feet, thin air can starve the body of oxygen, causing headaches, nausea, and confusion. As you can see, this is extremely open country. You can see these rock bluffs over here. Carl was sick. He's not going to climb these bluffs. He's not going up that. After our initial searches here with no findings, then you have to open the search area. A sick man goes downhill, so then you start working your way downhill. And we never found a thing, not one trace of where Carl went. After two decades, Carl's disappearance still defies logic. Maybe there's a bigger, stranger explanation. Some people believe a mysterious energy emanates from this restless mountain, energy that draws in beings not of this world. UFOs have been reported coming in and out of the area, obscured by strange clouds. I'm curious to know what Grizz thinks about the paranormal explanations for what's going on here. Anything's possible. People come from all over the world to come to Mount Shasta um, for spiritual reasons. Rosemary Kuntz disappeared here in the Spirit Lake area when she was out hiking, trying to communicate with the spirits that were there. Spirit Lake, or Lake of the Dead, is a sacred place to the Native American Karuk tribe. Every year, they hold ceremonies here to try to contact the dead. Rosemary was participating in one of these events when she disappeared. Rosemary was right in, right in Spirit Lake, right in that little pocket right over there. She walked around the wet lake to the main camp, and then she was just going right up on that little ridge. I mean, it was more, not more than 100 yards. We flew out, did an missile search, and then expanded it into an active search operation with lots of resources. Helicopters with heat-seeking cameras, sniffer dogs, more than 50 people on foot and on horseback scoured the terrain. Different conditions than what we have on the mountain. Uh, heavy timber, high mountain country, but um, again, not one clue. We never found a thing. Um, not one thing, no tracks, no nothing. There's only one thing we know for sure. Something very weird is happening on Mount Shasta. All right, Chris, well, thanks for the big picture, man. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'll keep my eyes and ears open and uh, my feet on the ground. Yeah, always be careful out there. You know, keep your head on a swivel, as I always say. Chris has given me a great view of Mount Shasta by air, but now it's time for me to explore this area on foot. I want to rule out some of the more logical explanations for these disappearances. It's a fact that iron-rich rock melted by lava can become magnetized. If the magnetic field on Mount Shasta is strong enough, it could throw off a compass and cause someone to get lost. I've decided to conduct an experiment to see what it is about Shasta that makes so many people go missing. Perhaps they're just getting lost. That's what I'm here to find out. I'm gonna head north for two miles and then head straight back out. The idea is to walk in one heading and then turn around and come back to see if my compass guides me correctly in both directions. My digital compass has two magnetic sensors that could be thrown off by as much as 10 degrees or 900 feet if the area has a strong enough magnetic field. I've been lost before, you know, heat, heat exhaustion, dense jungle coverage, pitch black moonless nights like this one. By those standards, this forest should be easy. But up here, you always have to watch your back. Predators like coyotes, mountain lions and bears prowl these woods.
Okay, I've gone just under two miles. I'm gonna turn 180 degrees, head back directly south, and that'll put me back where I started. There's something moving in the woods. What was that? At the base of Mount Shasta, where several people have mysteriously vanished, I'm trying to determine where the magnetic disruptions could be to blame. When suddenly, I'm not alone. Just here. Although so much around me looks unfamiliar, it must be the path I followed out, because I'm back at my vehicle. So much for the theory that magnetized rock has been sending people off course. I'll have to look even deeper for answers, and into a theory that's a little out there. Some people believe that Mount Shasta is on an intersection of ley lines, which are supposed to be like electromagnetic highways circling the globe, connecting sacred sites like Stonehenge, the Great Pyramids, Machu Picchu, and Mount Shasta. It's said where these lines intersect, you see extreme concentrations of energy, which can be harnessed to travel between dimensions. Believers claim that the place I'm headed, a formation at the base of Mount Shasta called a stone door, is such a portal. This is amazing. It almost looks like it's been marked by someone or something. This looks like a door, a doorway. It reminds me of another stone structure in Peru. A marumuru near Lake Titicaca was said to be carved by the Incas. Local legend has it people disappear through that doorway. There have also been strange sightings of tall men surrounded by glowing orbs walking into the rock. Picking up some kind of heat signature right here. This forward-looking infrared camera or FLIR detects changes in surface temperatures. I want to know if this rock is solid or if there's a passageway behind it. Oh man, look at that. There's definitely heat or energy coming off this area. Right here, just by this crack. There's definitely a space behind this. Look at the seam around the side. Basalt rock is formed by lava flows, which can cool into columns like this. But I feel there's a lot more going on here than science can explain. It's so frustrating. If, if doorways like these are portals, I can't get behind it. This area is riddled with stories. One of the strangest tales of someone disappearing from Mount Shasta happened in 2010 less than a mile from here. Indiana Pitts was just three years old when he went missing. He's never spoken publicly about his ordeal until now. I'm really interested to, to hear what you got to say. I went missing somewhere around here down this river. Sarah, you were, I mean, obviously a lot younger. What do you remember about what happened from this event? Indiana had made his way off with a couple of older kids, um, I think down a little bit further from where everybody was out of sight. Um, and as he described it, somebody yelled rattlesnake. And these kids took off running. 
and Idiana was so small he was left behind. They kept on running and then I was all alone in the woods. Now everybody here is freaking out, where is the kid? We have hundreds of people out here searching for Indiana helicopters. So um, what kind of techniques did the search and rescue people kind of set up? They had checkpoints along the river, safety points, where they were ready to catch a baby's body if it went over the falls. How long was he gone for? For a total of five hours, he was gone. Even though Indiana was so young at the time, he remembers the experience in vivid detail. Something happened when I disappeared for those five hours. I eventually told my grandma. And he says, I don't like the other Grandma Cappy. I said, well, what are you talking about? I'm the only Grandma Cappy. He said, no, you remember when I was lost in the woods? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, another Grandma Cappy grabbed me and took me to a creepy place. She led me into a cave. She took my shirt off and pressed on my stomach and was doing, like, experiments on me. I asked him, was there anybody else in the cave? And he said, yes, Grandma, but they were, like, frozen against the side. And uh, he mentioned that there were purses and guns in there. And I know we live in an area where people go missing. So in my mind, I'm thinking, has other campers or somebody, you know, hunters been abducted or something? And I said, um, well, were you scared? And he said, well, I wasn't scared until she walked over to a ladder in the cave. And when I saw her go up the ladder, she sparkled all around her. I said, well, what happened after that? And he said, well, she took me over to a bush and said, you wait there until they come and find you. That ended up being the trail that he was found on. Do you believe that what he saw um, and experienced is, is real? I genuinely believe something happened, genuinely. And with all of the different mysteries and things that are surrounding this location, um, I, there's no doubt in my mind that something happened. A lot of people believe that Indiana was abducted by aliens, passing through one of those energy portals. So I'm headed back to the area where I found the stone door to dig a little deeper. This time, I'm joined by paranormal investigator John Vavanko. He claims to know what's behind the door because he can see through it. What is the significance of this area that we're in right now? The data that we got back on this location was this is a portal. This is a, a shamanic, very much revered by an ancient culture in the past, portal. But I'll tell you, all we've found are very dark stories and very dark things. John and his team of investigators claim they see into Mount Shasta using remote viewing, the practice of seeing distant or unseen targets using only your mind. So we've remote viewed the heck out of a lot of incidences around here, utilizing a whole team of psychics who are trained in a uh, CIA-developed methodology to get information on things that are beyond our five senses. Incredibly, John says you don't have to be born with any psychic ability to learn remote viewing. I've been doing this for over 20 years now, and we work with various intelligence agencies that had to do with aliens and UFOs. From 1978 to 1991, a secret US Army unit codenamed Project Stargate experimented with remote viewing for gathering military and domestic intelligence. According to recently declassified records, the unit successfully identified spies, Soviet submarines, and even plutonium in North Korea. Today, John's using the same method to investigate the disappearances at Mount Shasta. He claims the energy here gets stronger at night, making it easier to remote view. Carl Landers, who was one of those that disappeared, could be in one of these locations. In fact, some of our remote viewing data even had him alive and still held in one of these locations. Some of the abductions that we've remote viewed 
we get these beings that are very tall, gray, with big eyes, scaly skin, that are responsible for the abductions, and they're going after genetic material. And these locations are quite possibly the locations that they move in and out of. John's description reminds me of the sightings at the gate in Peru and of Indiana's account. Are we closing in on Mount Shasta's dark secrets? I'm willing to give remote viewing a shot, and John says he can guide me through it. But I have to warn you, there is a risk. These beings, if they see you looking at them, they will come after you. Close your eyes. Feel what's happening in your body. This is crazy. I'm investigating mysterious disappearances on Mount Shasta, a mountain in California riddled with stories of UFO abductions and portals to other dimensions. Paranormal investigator John Vavanko believes this stone structure found at the eastern base of Mount Shasta is a portal used by otherworldly beings. He's teaching me how to look through the rock using just the power of my mind. What you want to do is close your eyes Feel what's happening in your body and intend for visuals to come up. No matter how hard I try to clear my thoughts, I can't get Indiana's abduction story out of my mind. So much for my ability to remote view. I need to find another way to get into the heart of the mountain. It's now day three of my mission. I'm meeting with Mount Shasta expert Dustin Neff, who knows about an entrance on the northern outskirts of the mountain. This area we're standing on right now is Pluto's cave. These are ancient lava tubes. So everything around Mount Shasta below ground is basically just riddled with caves. And this is one of those places that people say there's a portal. This leads directly beneath Mount Shasta in the distance. So if you're gonna solve this mystery, one of the places you need to go is underground. All right, I'm excited. Let's, uh, let's get in and get up. All right, let's go. Could Pluto's cave be where Indiana was taken? Could it be a portal to another dimension for otherworldly beings? Or are these lava tubes places where hikers seek refuge from the weather, only to get lost in an underground maze? Whatever the explanation, I'll need to keep my wits about me. This cave was first discovered in 1897. They found uh, artifacts in it. So from that, you know, we pretty much know that Native Americans used it, right. you know, for their ceremonies. In 1904, British prospector J.C. Brown claimed to have found a cave to an underground city 11 miles deep in the mountain, full of gold, shields, and mummies, some of which were 10 feet tall. Brown's discovery harkens back to Native American legends of a race of giants living inside Mount Shasta. Supposedly, he kept the city a secret for 30 years before making plans to catalog the treasure trove with an 80-person crew. But the day they were set to head out, J.C. Brown mysteriously disappeared. No one saw or heard from him ever again. Could Pluto's cave be the same cave? I don't like it down here. It's always creeped me out. This is where they found the artifacts, is right down there at the end of that tunnel. There's a crawl space. You can crawl back there, and it leads to other chambers within the cave. And a lot of people won't go any farther than this. I won't. I wouldn't go back there. You yeah. can pay me to go back there. 
Well, I'm not going to force you to go any further. I don't want you to do anything you're not comfortable with. I'm going to push a little deeper down there. All right, take care. It's freezing. I'm just, I'm going to put it on a warmer top. It's got to be 20, 25 degrees cooler down here. This red flashlight keeps my eyes adjusted to the dark. In the strange world, one wrong step could be disastrous. I'm going farther into Pluto's cave than most would dare. Legend has it that anyone who attempts to find J.C. Brown's underground city will face a tragic end. And now I'm following in those very footsteps. After several hours, I feel like I'm getting close to Mount Shasta when I hit an impasse. There's been a collapse here, and I can't go any farther. But there's a lot left to investigate, so I'll spend the night in this bat-filled cave near a volcano that could blow at any time. This looks like a great place for me to camp out for the night. I can see straight down into there. I mean, if there is a portal down there, this gives me a great vantage point. I can see whatever comes around that dark corner. And if this is some sort of doorway to another dimension, I'm gonna to need to stay alert. Explorers and adventurers, they've been seeking these portals for centuries, but none of them have had the, the high-tech equipment that we do. I've still got my flow camera. As you can see, my hand passing in front of the lens. I also have the motion-activated infrared cameras, which I'm gonna set up on the rocks. Anything moves in front of that, picks it up. Unlike the flur that picks up heat, these three night vision cameras enhance all available light to capture any movement in the cave. I'm nearing Mount Shasta, investigating an ancient lava tube, looking for any proof of a portal to another dimension. Suddenly, a little after 2 a.m., my flow camera indicates there's something big in here with me. Something's down there. Let's go, let's go, come on. I have no idea what I saw on my flow camera. It could have been an animal. The heat signature looked too big to be a bat, too small to be a human. A few hours later, I exit the cave and download the footage from my infrared cameras. But when I go back to around 2 or 5 a.m., what I find is some kind of unexplained picture interference at the exact moment my FLIR camera caught the heat signature. Was the mountain's dark energy interfering with my equipment? 
there's no way to know for sure. Shasta's woods and underground passageways are definitely eerie, especially when you're alone. But most of the odd disappearances happen on the mountain itself. That's where I'm going next. What I'm looking for, above all else, is any indication of a tunnel into the heart of the mountain. But before I hike up the mountain, I want to know more about the spirits said to rule this place. Jack Walking Eagle is a member of the Karuk tribe, the indigenous people of this area. They've been here for centuries. Shasta is literally in their bones. Yeah, I've been around this mountain all my life. Yep. and all my family's life. The Karuk tribe believes that Shasta's upper slopes are home to powerful entities that can injure people, drive them crazy, or make them vanish altogether. These spirit people called Woga are said to be a race of giants who pass back and forth from this world to another dimension. I mean, going above the tree line is a very dangerous area. I went up there, and I seen the big tall people. And they, they were all dressed in white and gold. When he was a young man, Walking Eagle defied his elders and camped above the tree line with his girlfriend. It was magnificent. The white was whiter than white, and the gold was golder than gold. I mean, it was just shining. And their whole being just shined. And they were standing there like this. He had a sword on this side, and the guy over there had the same thing. And they, and they, they looked like Romans, but they weren't Romans. And they were standing there and were saying, come on, it, it's OK. You can come home now. It's all right. You don't need to be here anymore. And I was like, Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, I ain't leaving this earth. There's a tunnel underneath this mountain that goes wherever they come from, and that's where they go. Walking Eagle's story sounds eerily similar to Indiana's abduction story. I understand that you're, you're wanting to journey up on the mountain. I do. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't go above the tree line, whatever you do. Not without being properly uh, guided. I feel that for me to, to help you on your journey is for, for you to go in the sweat lodge and, and just be, get pure, you know, and get in your heart, get out of your mind. Get yourself right with yourself, and then that way you're going to go see what you're going to see. For the Karuk tribe, a ceremonial sweat is a spiritual journey to cleanse the mind, body, and soul. The intense heat is said to pull negative energy from the body and stimulate prophetic visions and hallucinations. My investigation into Mount Shasta's history of strange disappearances has taken me into a sweat lodge ceremony to prepare myself for the journey up the mountain. Native American legend has it there's a race of giants up there who have attempted to lure people into another dimension.
Intense. Very so friggin' intense. According to the Karuk people, the five hour long ceremony has purified me and provided me with a layer of spiritual protection. I feel honored to be blessed and I feel totally protected to go forward up onto the mountain. Crossing the tree line. From this point forward is where we're not meant to go. Not only is this volcanic mountain prone to earthquakes and landslides, it's also one of the highest peaks in the nation. On Mount Shasta, trees stop growing at an altitude of 8,000 feet because of harsh winds, low moisture, and thin air. That makes it tough going for me too. I can't cover this whole mountainside on foot looking for the opening. It's getting harder and harder to breathe. I'm going to need some help from a trusty piece of technology. I'm launching a drone with the FLIR heat sensing camera to see if I can detect any kind of heat signatures up there on the mountain. Caves and underground tunnels stay the same temperature year round. So any variation from the surface readings should stand out. something starts to glow on the screen. I found one area that appears to have heat signatures. That could be an opening into the mountain. It's right up that way on that ridge, about a 1,000 foot climb. With dozens of deaths reported here above the tree line, the risk to myself and my crew, it's very real. I'm almost two miles up Mount Shasta's rocky slope. I'm looking for any sign of a hidden entrance that could contain clues to the strange encounters reported by Walking Eagle and Indiana. My FLIR drone has indicated this open area, but there's no sign of a cave. Maybe there's an opening beneath me and I just can't see it. After all, this landscape can radically transform overnight. In the 60s, some developers built a ski lodge, but it didn't go well. An avalanche wiped out the chairlift, and a fire swept through this whole ski lodge. And now not a single thing remains. We're at over 8,200 feet, and I'm struggling to get enough oxygen from the thin air. In extreme cases, altitude sickness can cause fluid to build up in the lungs and swelling of the brain. Although, I shouldn't complain. My crew has it even worse, pushing a piece of equipment I hope will let me see what the drone can't. We brought GPR unit, which is over 50 pounds, so it's gear I urgently need to survey the mountain. GPR, or ground penetrating radar, emits radio waves to see below the surface. It's used to study geology, search for buried treasure, and detect underground mines or tunnels. This is roughly the spot that the flow camera on the drone identified some heat signatures. The GPR can see through this rocky ground to depths of 50 feet. Ground penetrating radar can be very effective, but you need to use this equipment properly. It needs to remain parallel to the ground at all times. It seems to be picking something up right there. This ripple-like image shows an eight foot wide opening about seven feet down. So I'm gonna pin this spot and I'm gonna run a grid pattern over this area and uh, see where it leads. This is interesting. There's definitely a pattern emerging here. Readings indicate there's a void below me, running in a straight line up the mountain. This GPR unit is telling me one thing. There's a tunnel right here. Walking Eagle insisted there was a tunnel entrance somewhere up here. I have to follow this lead and look for some kind of opening higher up. 
If my FLIR camera and the results of my ground penetrating radar tests are correct, the area I'm looking for, right up there. I push as high as I can, almost 10,000 feet. Unfortunately, I can't see any opening. But if an entire chairlift and ski lodge can be wiped out in an avalanche, I suppose a cave entrance could easily be covered by these massive boulders. It's been decades since Walking Eagle first saw the shining figures on the mountain. There's no digging up here without heavy machinery. The sun is going down. I can go no farther. The secrets of Mount Shasta are safe for now. Mount Shasta is a spiritual place, but it appears to have a dark side too. How else can you explain the bizarre disappearances and strange encounters? Search and rescue expert Grizz Adams couldn't provide me with an answer. To have somebody just completely disappear on you um, is sometimes just mind-boggling. Paranormal investigator John Vavanko believes interdimensional beings are taking people into the mountain. These beings, if they see you looking at them, they will come after you. And eyewitnesses, Indiana Pitts and Walking Eagle, claim they were lured or enticed to go into the mountain, but were somehow able to escape from its clutches. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, I ain't leaving this earth. I wasn't able to see these beings, nor prove the mysterious rock formations I saw are portals to another world. This violent mountain sits quietly guarding its secrets, at least for now. <laughs>